uh, that uh, for the time to repent and fellowship in this great call. Thank you, Father, that it has come at the right time when we are facing different calamities. As our nations, we pray that we get reunited with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in repentance, we thank you for the expansion of the ministry of repentance. We pray, Father, for wisdom and discernment as we serve in the garden of repentance. We thank you, Father, for the unity, prayer, and repentance, and the refreshing time of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we pray for one another as iron sharpens another iron. We thank you for the silent time uh, for the Holy Spirit as we are cleansed as his bride. We thank you for that soon and very soon, bit by bit, by and by, you are coming to take us home in Jesus' mighty name and rest under your bosom. We thank you, Father, for the leadership and membership of uh, Repentance, Global Day of Repentance. We thank you, Father, for African News, Australian News, and American News. We thank you and appreciate you for the great time of Israel Zoom, which we had yesterday, and today is the cleansing his bride Zoom, and tomorrow is the Africa News. As your word says, that we should pray and repent without ceasing. We thank you for those who are yet to join. Thank you for Susan on the Sound Council, that it should be clear. We know in other nations, the weather is not good like South Africa, KwaZulu Natal, as uh, there are snow and in Lesotho as well. This affects even the sound, the sound of the Zoom, but we pray that all is well as you own and control the airwaves in Jesus' name. We thank you for the provision of the ministry, the providence. Thank you for the protection. According to Psalm 91, may you protect our families, ministries, as well as nations. Thank you for Second Chronicles 7, verse 14, that uh, we are given the privilege, as Pastor Jeff says, it's not the punishment, but it's a gift for us to repent and return from our weakness. We thank you for those planning to join or pray for their uh, uh, smartphones that are, that are able to work. Even join those joining through laptops is going to work well. Thank you for waiting in Romans 8, 20, that we know that all things work together for good to us, to, to us who are the code according to your purpose. Thank you for the nations. Even the nations are struggling, but we pray that you are being kept as the remnant and salt and light of the Holy Spirit. May you lead us in today's uh, call. May you not do this out of tradition, but out of relationship. With our Lord Jesus Christ, may you, you will infill, infill us and also uh, indwell in us through the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. We thank you for the opportunity to save. We we'll pray for our uh, upcoming programs, even committing to your hands for the October 7th Global Day of Repentance uh, for Israel, even in November, as we also pray for the United States of America for the upcoming elections. Be with us and bless us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving in our hearts and all the saints say amen in Jesus' name. Amen. What a beautiful opening prayer. Thank, thank you, you, Edward. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God. So welcome, everyone. Yes, you know, the Lord already calls you and me once we're in the kingdom, having repented to come into his kingdom, which he invites everyone on the planet Matthew 4, 17, once you're in the kingdom, he calls you already his bride. So we are cleansing today. There'll be several processes that you can do in private with the Holy Spirit. You get the Holy Spirit once you're in the kingdom. And uh, sadly, we have a lot of Christians or claiming to be Christians that never have received the Holy Spirit including even some pastors and priests, because they've never converted, they've never truly received that um, change of mind and heart and come into the kingdom. So therefore, they're, they're talking about Christianity. They may know scriptures, but it's when you truly have repented that you come on in to the kingdom. And... Um, so I'm just going to read uh, the big picture here is on this first slide. You're welcome to these slides. Glad to send them out to you. 
because we see each of you as a teacher for this. You can even, we even have some of these slides, I think, in some languages, uh, including French. So basically, this first slide is the big picture, one of the several big pictures here. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17, starting in, I'm sorry, in 16, and then all the way up to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. It says, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are, that's where you put your name, you are the temple of the living God. It's assuming, again, that you've repented and you really came into the kingdom. As God has said, I'll dwell in them and walk among them. I'll be their God. They shall be my people. This goes back to these Old Testament wonderful prophecies. Therefore, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what's unclean. I'll receive you. I will be, look at this, I will be a father to you. You shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Wow. Therefore, having these promises, this is now 2 Corinthians 7.1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let's cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Well, I love that phrase because it just is a direction. None of us is perfect. Only Jesus walked here perfectly holy. Nonetheless, he calls us to be holy as he's holy. And we go in that direction. It's that narrow pathway. Wide is the way of destruction, but the path is narrow towards his holiness. And it says perfecting holiness. You could be beginning today as long as you're on that path, you're perfecting it. You may want to do more perfecting tomorrow, etc., for the rest of your life, this brief lifetime here on this planet. And so you're perfecting holiness every step you take. And also, it's obvious that you have this deep respect and honor and devotion, this wonderful, healthy fear of God. So perfecting holiness in the fear of God is just such a beautiful way of saying that's that's what you want to do. No longer playing old traditional religious church and so forth, um, unless it really feeds you. But one-on-one -on -one cleaning up directly with your indwelling Holy Spirit in the healthy fear of God, the deep respect that he is honored with obviously. And then the other big picture is here on Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, and he gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So the Lord is behind all this. He will speak through you or me when we pray. It's all about him. We're not setting up a denomination or church or building or anything like that. We use this word of God in four different Zoom calls. And uh, this is the third of for this week, tomorrow, we will be doing Africa kneels. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, one other thought the Lord just gave to me that, that I haven't uh, posted even with Susan yet, and that's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verse 3. It's directed to Israel, but I think it's also directed to you and me. He says, break up your fallow ground. Fallow spelled F-A-L-L-O-W. That's the hard, hard ground. In other words, what you're doing is very hard. There's no question about it because the flesh 
fights with the spirit. It'll find some distraction and you'll be busy doing something else. So to deal with your own issues, that's breaking up fallow ground. That's breaking up hard ground. And that's good. It's healthy. Good for you. Good for you. And we all know what that looks like. I happen to live in a place where the ground is within two or three inches. You hit, wow, really hard ground. It's very hard to uh, plant a garden. You have to really <laughs> dig. And uh, symbolically, that's what we do also with our old patterns of sin. So you may want to look at that. It's Jeremiah 4, a part of um, verse 3. Break up your fallow ground. Well, let's look at the next slide. And welcome, Linda. This is great. I love it when you're on. I know you're busy, but praise God. So here's the second big picture graphic when people want to know, well, what are you doing? Who are you? We are um, a nonprofit group that holds days and times of a Christian group, days and times of repentance throughout his nations to build up the body of Christ, preparing her for his soon coming as our bridegroom. And isn't it obvious from world events that ha, lots, lots is shaking. The Lord must be coming home soon. And then we point out here that wonderful verses in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, 19 to 22. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. This is the love of a risen Christ, the Holy Spirit, really the Abba Father, that, that beautiful, loving chastening that says, hey, you don't want to run across this highway without looking in both directions. You don't want to put your hand on the stove and get burned and so forth. This is the love that you would have as a loving father to a little child. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. As we're zealous for our football teams, our soccer teams in your nation, be zealous actually spiritually to get rid of the old person that you were before you knew the Lord. So be zealous and repent. And the Holy Spirit, the risen Christ says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and opens the door, I'll come in to him and dine with him, sup with him, and he with me. In other words, he would spend time with you and go over your issues. He would chew about, chew things over. I don't know whether in your nation you use that idiom or phrase. Yeah, let me, let me chew on that for a while. It means you're going to ponder it. You're going to think about it. He will spend plenty of time dining with you, chewing with you on any old issue like anger or lying or whatever the issue is for you. And he says then, to him that overcomes, this is such a beautiful promise, look. To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. And Susan has a good teaching on this. Beautiful that we, we get to be in that throne area. Wow. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So that's where we are today. A lot of people in a lukewarm church, especially here in my nation and especially in my state of California. But there are those that are the repentance remnant there, seeing we have got to return to the Word of God and we've got to repent and Turn to God. That's really what the Hebrew word of Shuva is. It means return to God. It's that simple. Turn in your thinking. The Greek word is the metanoia, change of mind. The Greeks were all into their minds all the time, right? Well, this is also in your mind. You've got to make a decision, your free will decision, 
do I want to follow the world? Do I want to follow the flesh? Do I want to, you know, make a million dollars? Or do I want to follow the call that the Lord has on my life and receive that beautiful, unique call that only he can give you and that only you would have? Because he knew you were in your mother's womb. Psalm 139. Well, praise God. The other thing that we have on this second slide is a beautiful picture from 2 Peter. Both 1 and 2 Peter are so good about this issue of repentance. Look at this. He gives us a kind of a pathway here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 8. It says, as his divine power, that, that's assuming you again have the Holy Spirit, his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be, look at this, partakers of the divine nature. Wow. They don't know about that in the world. They don't know about that among your worldly leaders out there. So you're a partaker of the divine nature once you have his implanted indwelling Holy Spirit. Having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, here's your path now, or a path, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, that's a big one. To self-control, perseverance, that's another big one. Well, these are all big ones. <laughs> to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, look at this, brotherly kindness. And then, to brotherly kindness, the love of the risen Christ, the love of Jesus. You get to be his ambassador, when you come in the room, they see Jesus. They see your eyes. They see your smile. They see, well, or a non-smile if you have some rage, righteous anger. But yeah, you are his ambassador. And Jason has just posted on the chat, what a great sequence. Yeah, it's great. Get that sense of a direction. Where do you stand? Are, are you working on knowledge? Are you working on your faith? I mean, you have to really start with faith. Are you on to perseverance? Are you on to, or prior to that, on to self-control and so forth? <clears throat> Praise God. It's all between you and the Holy Spirit. And you can share it with other people, but guess what? You and I individually have to kneel in front of our Creator very, very soon. And so, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Do that one-on-one -on -one time right now. Now's the time to get cleansed, to be his bride as much as you can in this brief lifetime. Well, let's look at the next slide. And uh, this is going to be fun because I really encourage you to make up your own summary of the Lord's plan. It's really kind of presumptive, if that's the right word, to even put that word out there. I mean, we, we don't even know the entire Lord's plan. But these are some key scriptures that will excite your students as you teach. And you can do your own summary. I liked this one out of Daniel chapter 2, verse 42 and 45, it says, as the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom, he's talking, I think, about today's world that we're in. And of course, this was 3,000 years ago, but yeah, well, no, I guess 2,500 years ago, something like that. As the toes were partly iron, partly clay, this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven, 
Yes, praise God. We know who that is. That's Jesus, all authority in heaven and on earth. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. In other words, it won't be the Greeks, it won't be the Romans, it won't be the humanists today wanting a, a whole world new order. It says, it will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. Wow. I just love that. It will be a kingdom that will endure forever, never to, to be destroyed. It will not be left to any people. It will be clearly the Lord who sets it up. This is picked up also in one sense in Micah chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. In that day, declares the Lord, I'll gather the lame, I'll assemble the exiles and those I brought to grief. I'll make the lame my remnant, those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from that day and forever. Yes, yes, yes. These four, there's a forever kingdom coming up. And you know this beautiful passage out of Isaiah chapter 9. We're living this out. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there'll be no end. Wow. So he's got an overview of all that's going on, the, the current war against Israel, the current turmoil in virtually every nation. I mean, I tell me if you find a nation that is not undergoing a lot of shaking today. Nonetheless, the Lord has all authority. It says in Matthew 28, 18, the risen Christ, having moved around for 40 days, says just before he ascends, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Well, the other two scriptures that we have on this page, and again, make up your own summary. Teach, teach whatever you wish. This is just a beginning of a beginning of a beginning. But I love this one, Luke chapter 1, verse 30 and 33. An angel said to Miriam, Mary is her gr Greek name. Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You'll conceive and give birth to a son. I mean, we don't we all preach this, what we used to call Christmas. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Yeshua. In other words, he was to be called salvation. He was to be called, well, Jesus is the Greek name. She had no discretion, nor did Joseph. That's how they had to call this one Jesus, Yeshua is his Hebrew name. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Wow. So connected to Daniel chapter 2. The kingdom is never going to end. And here we have it reflected in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. There were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world, yeah, that's what we're in now, has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah and he will reign forever and ever, period. So obviously, we have got to go through a lot of shaking and trauma and uh, death, frankly, between now and that seventh angel sounding his trumpet. If you read the book of Revelation, it's very clear what's going to go on. And yet, 
you and I are today called to prepare and we will be protected by the Lord. We're his bride. He's going to protect us. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Thanks for letting me kind of preach here for the first half hour, but this has been on my heart. Again, thank you for following the Jeremiah 4, verse 3, breaking up fallow ground. Such a good example. Really hard, hard rocks, hard clay. I mean, it's so much more fun to be in the garden with uh, fresh topsoil, and it's real easy. You can buy it in a bag or something. It's all, someone's already done the hard, simple cleansing work. It's real easy to manipulate. But the Lord has called you and me, apparently, to do this work with a pickaxe or something that you need to do to break down your ego. Now, lastly, here we are cleansing as his bride. We already covered Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, but also look at us here in Revelation 19, 7 to 9. Let's rejoice and be glad. Let's give him the glory for the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. Fine linen, bright and clean has been given her to wear, Fine linen means the righteous deeds of God's people. The angel said to me, right, how blessed are those who've been invited to the wedding, the wedding feast of the Lamb. And then he added, these are God's very words. Praise God. So, of course, you and I want to be included in that wedding, that beautiful wedding of the Lamb. And then this is just also, I think, so telling of how much the Lord loves you and me. Virtually the last verse of the last chapter of the last book of the Bible, Revelation 22, 17. Here, this is in the complete Jewish Bible version. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come. In other words, we're included in this last call. It would have been simply enough for the the Holy Spirit to just put the call out. Nonetheless, he includes you and me. The Spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life. Yes, free of charge. Yes, it's free of charge. His water of life. So here's the first of several processes, if you wish, exercises, private, jumping right into it. And I'll be quiet for three minutes. If later you want to share, that's fine. But as part of a bride, his bride, is there a spot or a wrinkle you need to remove today in private time with the Holy Spirit? It's just between you and him. It'll be private. I'll check back in in three minutes. God bless you. See if there's a spot or a wrinkle just for today that he's talking to you about. God bless you.
כולה בשו אותו קשה לבעלי דין. Well, praise God, praise God. Again, that's private, but did anyone want to share, you can certainly go ahead. We'll make time for it. Go on ahead, if that's on your heart to share. I need to um, spend a little more time with the Lord on this, but he said that there were spots on my veil And in the Western world, the brides wear the the uh, a veil over their face where, you know, you can't exactly see who they are. But then when, once they lift their veil, the glory of their beauty of who they truly are is revealed. And I feel like part of it is a covering um, in, in my heart. I, I'm, I'm working on my character with the Lord uh, to be all who he wants me to be so that others can see him in me and through me. without spot. So um, I'm not exactly sure of where it, where it all is, but I did see a covering, so I need to pray more into it. But I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that he said that, he shared that. And uh, it's also speaking of my beauty, the beauty of who I am, the true me, you know, the redeemed me, the blueprint me, um, which is his bride. So I'm grateful for that. Wow. I love it when you share. Jason, you're so honest. You're so vulnerable. And we all just kind of go, wow. Wow. Because we see ourselves in what you just said. That's just beautiful. Really, that's just, I, I love it when you're that honest. I mean, you always are. It's You're just such a valued participant each time. Thank you. Thank you. We all receive it. And then Susan, same with you. Look at you. What courage you just posted on the chat. The Lord just showed me now to get rid of some fears in our life. You're speaking to the planet, by the way. Get rid of some fears in our life. We need to learn to walk in more obedience. In other words, just do the right things right at the start and don't put it off till later. And we'll have less guilt and fear in the back of our minds haunting us. Hello, you speak for a lot of people. Thanks for being so vulnerable and honest. And you just now help lifting that off. One of the things about sharing is that you lift that off. It's going to be easier now for you to do exactly what you know what to do by having stated the obvious, and then we all can totally relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just getting uh, some hearts here from me and from Jason. Anyone else before we move on? This is, this is why we do this every week. And by the way, you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. Get a copy of these slides. Do this with your prayer teams. Give them the privacy. Honor their privacy. Because I think, understandably, so many people are so scared of, oh, my God, what's going to happen here? No, you have the total privacy to say nothing or to actually, it gets on your heart to say, you know, I have to really admit this, I do have blah, 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 blah. And and everyone else is going to nod their heads and go, yeah, I'm working on that, too. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you, we have so much more in common as human beings in our old stuff than you would imagine. It's very rare that someone comes up with something that's, wow, I never heard of that issue. No, there's a lot of very basic issues we're all working on. Yeah, and Jason said, these are actually distractions. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he says, and we can cleanly move forward without weight when like the weighs on your weight on your back a hundred pound sack of concrete that the enemy seeks to dis to be put on us to beset us good word yeah amen well praise god let's let's look at the next slide yeah use this with your teams This is the other one. To, well, they're all here for you to use, but this one too. Preach from this. God has a gift 
not just of his blood, not just of his eternal good plan, but his gift of repentance. It's a gift. It's not a punishment. So many people think of it as a punishment, think, oh, my God, I, I have to be a Catholic. I have to go to a priest. I have to sit in this little box. I have to spill my guts. Then it'll be on page one tomorrow in the local newspaper. And it's not like that. You can clearly, clearly, just one-on-one -on -one with the Holy Spirit, you can clean up. He loves you so much, he just says, why would you carry the heavy load around when you don't need it? If you want to, <laughs> a little more, he, he'll, I guess he would let you, but you don't need to do that. So number one, repent to join Jesus's kingdom. He could have said shalom. He could have said, love your neighbor. He could have said, plant a garden provide some food for your neighbors. I mean, that could, all of this could have been and was said later. I'm not sure about the planting the food for a garden, but, but in short, what he did say, repent, repent, turn around. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, stop these old practices that have gone off the mark come back, return, repent, really go all the way back to Genesis, Exodus, and so forth. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies. He is the Messiah. The kingdom is at hand. So from that point, 2,000 years ago, he has been clearly the Messiah. He answered every prophecy. So that's really fundamental to teach, absolutely fundamental to teach. The other thing that I explained to a brother on the phone today, we don't even have posted, but if you look at the book of Mark, we're, we're pretty quick to look at Matthew or Luke or John, but sometimes rarely we look at the book of Mark, at least that's been my experience. But at chapter six in the book of Mark, <clears throat> In that wonderful chapter, the Lord puts together his team. And by the way, they don't go out individually. They're in teams. Something we have to teach our brothers in, well, all over the planet, but it's especially in Africa, where it's been a very kind of a solo journey for a lot of people. No, it's supposed to be teamwork. But in short, Mark 6 Jesus puts his team together in verse 12. They're doing what he's told them to do. It says they went out, those disciples went out and they preached repentance, period. Wow. They just followed exactly what he had done in Matthew 4.17 or Mark 1.15. And then remarkably in verse 17, it says, in effect, deliverance and healings then followed. I forgot the exact words, but, but that's really what happened. When you preach repentance, healings, spiritual healing from the old man, the old person, and deliverance, physical deliverance from demons and so forth, that can happen as you preach repentance. And we're watching this happen in Zambia, especially. I'm getting... Virtually every week, I get a list, an email list from our sister, who's got a group called um, Zombie Neils. these young people, teenagers that have been shown the gospel. They've shown that God has a plan for their life, John 15, 16, and they go out and preach repentance. And each week, about 100 or more sign up and come into the kingdom. Wow. By name, she gives me the names of these people. Wow. So they're really seeing the results. I want to encourage you. This gift of repentance works. So praise God. Praise God. Any comments before we move on?
Yeah, Susan is just saying you become an open target to the enemy if you run alone. We just can't handle everything ourselves. We need others. Amen, amen, amen. Jason says no Lone Rangers. Exactly. Exactly. And he also added unforgiveness is the biggest block to deliverance. Yes, yes, yes. No question. You go around never forgiving. Your bones are brittle, you'll die young, and you miss the whole point of life. You may even with, miss eternity with the Lord. You're just going to say, hey, I'm not going to support your getting into the kingdom if you keep unforgiving. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. So here's another exercise. Do you even have a remnant of lying or exaggerating any kind of a way by which you speak something that is not the truth, but it can be even seen as perverse? It says in uh, Luke 18, verse 14, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. He who humbles himself will be exalted. And also Proverbs 8 Verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Yeah, so this will again be private. So just allow the, the Lord, the risen Christ, the Holy Spirit to come into your mind and heart, dine with you over a possible old sin pattern. And we'll take these three minutes of silence. You can ask the Lord, because this includes exaggerating, going um, beyond what's really true. Maybe you want to make a better impression, so you sort of build up your resume, so to speak, of who you are, or what you did. No, you don't need to do that. You have to either be quiet or speak the truth. So you can ask the Holy Spirit, where did this come from? Did I pick it up from my dad, from my grandfather, my um, aunt, my uncle, whatever? Is it a family propensity? You know, maybe this has been a long standing pattern in your tribe, in your nation, in your family, and you're going all the way back. And how does it show up in your life today? Well, I'll be quiet. Again, it's private. You don't have to share, but spend that time with the Holy Spirit. See if this is an issue for you that you don't need to continue with unless you really want to. You can freely remove it with your Holy Spirit. He loves you. So I'll check back in in three minutes. God bless you. <laughs> uh, this is amazing. Jason just chatted. I was just talking to the Holy Spirit about exaggeration this morning. <laughs> oh, yes. He dealt with me on that one, too, buddy. Yeah.
Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit. And again, it's private, but does anyone want to share? Go on ahead. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know what? I, I'm I'm really grateful. This is a praise report. Um, the Lord, I had a dream years ago. Um, it was a, a very vis visceral dream. Um, and I had this white cord that went down and through my mouth into my stomach. And I was desperately trying to pull this thing out. And somebody who in the natural should have been there for me, they were laughing. They, they wanted, they, they weren't, they weren't on my side actually. And, uh, what I was hearing was it's an ancient evil. And it was, I believe it was either 17, but I believe it was 70. It was 70 levels deep. And, and it was one of those ones where you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, and, and I was, I just really freaked out. And I, I'm like, God, I don't know what it is. So I've, I've been trying to come to understanding. And as you were saying that, and we were, we were praying, I could see a cord in my, going into my mouth, but now the white part was breaking off like a shell and there was a tentacle. And as I was, and I'm like, I still don't like that, but at least I see it coming apart. So I feel like the Lord's saying, he's pointing me in the direction to understand that the embellishment, the exaggeration is part of this, this line wanting to make things bigger or seem better or, you know, than they are. And, and, and then as I'm watching the, the, the tail end of the tentacle, it's like a, uh, uh, almost like a lion's claw with with uh, paw with with claws on it. So not to go too much in the graphics, but but I'm I'm grateful that the Lord is giving me insight and not just letting me wonder uh, about what it is He's wanting to deal with. So I'm so grateful that He's sharing His heart because um, I, I want to be I want to be clean. I I want one of the things that as an encourager, I encourage people and, and I sell God big because he is big, but, but sometimes I struggle with the expectation he's bigger in other people's lives than he is in my own life. And, and so I want to, I want to be able to have the balance where I'm saying things as they are truly um, bringing glory to God. Um, but I don't want to be exaggerating. And, and so I, you know, God is God, uh, but I do believe, you know, I know I've had tendency to exaggerate and, and it's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want it to be clean. I want it to be as it is. I want the Holy Spirit honor and do what he wants to do with what it is. And that's enough. So yeah. thank you for, for sharing this and being obedient uh, to including this slide. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing this up. <laughs> Well, so thank you, yeah. honest, Jason. I love how honest you are. If I could just real quick, Father God, I just ask that you would remove any uh, remnant in my blood, my bloodline, Lord, of, of of insecurity, of fear, of not being enough, of not letting the testimony be true, of not letting it stand as it is, Lord, just the facts, Father God. So I'm asking that you uh, forgive my 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 family's going back. On both sides, mother and father, and I ask that you forgive me in every area where I've uh, uh, lied intentionally, or or later in life where I've exaggerated. Father God, would you just break that off? Would you just remove the roots of that, Lord, so that that everything that flows from me would be your perfect truth, Father God, that you you would be blessed, Lord, as you anoint my lips with clay, that you'd speak through me. I don't want anything in me that's not that's not of you, Father God, that's not of you, Lord God. I don't want anything that's not of you, Father God. May it be a pure well in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well said. Beautiful prayer. And um, yes, Abita just said um, on chat a very good point. Oh, heck, she just had to leave on her signal. But she said, exaggerating means we doubt God to do the finished work of making um, us believe what we're saying. And so may God forgive us. Yeah, yeah, really well said. In other words, you don't need to exaggerate. You just stand on the truth. There it is. Woo! Well, this is all good things. We're all cleansing. We're all walking that narrow path and we're doing it together. We're very much like those first disciples, you know, we're a team. The Lord already sees us as his bride. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide.
Yes, Susan just had a good word. It's self-exalting, right? Arrogance, yeah. So here at the end, this wonderful parable, and we're using the complete Jewish Bible translation. By the way, go to BibleGateway.com and check out, especially with the book of Isaiah, which um, we spend a lot of time on on our, our Tuesday program. But here it is again, this wonderful parable, Matthew 25, 1 to 13 in the complete Jewish Bible version. The kingdom of heaven at that time will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps, went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish, five were sensible. Foolish ones took lamps with them, but no oil. That's no Holy Spirit. Whereas the others took flasks of oil with their lamps. Now the bridegroom was late, so they all went to sleep. It was the middle of the night when the cry rang out. The bridegroom is here. Go out to meet him. Girls all woke up, prepared their lamps for lighting. I, I think that means also they cut the, the wick. They removed that which was already burnt so that it could be lit fresh. And in that sense, we're going to do an exercise here in a minute or two. The foolish ones said to the sensible ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both you and us. Go to the oil dealers, buy some for yourselves. But as they were going off to buy, the bridegroom came. Those who were ready went with him to the wedding feast. The door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came. Sir, they, sir, they cried, let us in. Whew. But he answered, indeed, I tell you, I don't know you. So stay alert because you know neither the day nor the hour. This is so good for you to teach your flock, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a worship leader, whether you're a chaplain, whether you're an elder, whether you're just a prayer partner, share it with your prayer partners. Share it with people that don't yet know the Lord. They might even get this parable. They might even get it. And you could lead them into the kingdom. So now what we're going to do is prepare that one issue, preparing your lamps for lighting. You want the most powerful Holy Spirit to operate in you. And if there's something that's burnt or dead, needs to be cut off as the wick, so to speak. Um, Take these three minutes, it'll be private, to see what that might be ready for you to, quote, prepare your lamp. So I'll be quiet. Check back in in three minutes. God bless you.
Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and again, it's private, but did anyone want to share what you might have just got? Kushalabanoto. Praise God. <clears throat> well, I just, yeah, go all oh, good. Linda's got something. I love it when you've got when you participate. Go ahead, Linda. Well, I just, it's just a reminder right now is Elul, and it's the time of preparation. And it's the absolute, this is, we need to remember these are dedicated feasts of God. They are not feasts of the Jews. They are the feasts of God that are in the Bible for all of us. And it's like, I may try and make it real easy. It's like a door just opens up in heaven for the month of Elul and all the way into Yom Kippur and all the way into the Feast of Tabernacles. He's right there. He's waiting for us to come to him. He wants us to be clean as a whistle. He wants us to draw close to him like never before. We are nearing the end of time and he is has the door open. He wants that all would be saved. So this just really touches my heart. We're in the 40 days of Teshuva. And so every single day we are praising him and asking, what is the place where I haven't done that 183 turnaround and come back to you, Lord? Help me. I want every sin out of my life. I want you more than I want life. That's what the Bible says, to love him more than you love life here alone. So... To me, this is just, it's such a time. And on on our two-hour prayer times on ICEJ, this hits us every day and hits the all of all of us that are prayer warriors. Are we are we going to trust God for what's going on in Israel right now? So we see all the bombs going off. Are we going to repent and know he has a plan? He knows exactly what he's doing. And his alive word says, all of Israel will be saved. Do we believe that? Is it true? Yes, it is. It's his word. So this really touches my heart. I just wanted to share that. Oh, amen. 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 Well, we're going to even have a focus on Israel here in a minute. But it, even now, anyone else have a prayer in your heart for Israel, even as they undertake or in the middle of this bombing, the war, the whole thing. Anyone else have a prayer in your heart for Israel? Go ahead. Father God, I just pray that your, your presence be with, within this conflict, Father, where, where you can pronounce peace once and for all. No more talks. It needs to be done. It needs to be executed from heaven the courts of heaven to earth. Peace, Father. Peace for the Middle East. Peace for Lebanon. Peace for Russia and Ukraine. Just peace all around the globe. And I pray this in the precious blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Anyone else going ahead? Well, Lord, I just lift up the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, Lord, I just would you continue to strengthen this man with your wisdom, your courage, your insight that only you can give, Lord. Strengthen him, bless his family. Lord, just continue to give him and those that serve him your wisdom on hour by hour, minute by minute on what to do. And draw them all the more closer to you, Lord, that they can even see clearly now 
that indeed you're the Messiah. Whether they're announcing that publicly or not, let them see it in dreams or however you work, Lord, that they would be that so closely drawn to you, needing you, they would see who you were. They would see the fulfillment of the prophecies in Isaiah and all over the Old Testament, Lord. They would just awake to those and come to you for your divine wisdom. All of this is under your hand. And I pray that in Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Now, here's a prayer written by a dear sister. She's on our board of the National Day of Repentance. And it's a prayer that you and I could write. It's valuable to spell these things out. I just took hers verbatim. And it's for Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 16, where it's clear that Yeshua took blood on him to heal the hatred, the violence, the way by which men treat other men, take down this spirit of division and hatred, creating a one new man. So I'll just read this into the tape here today, the record, so to speak. It says, Father, we call forth spiritual leaders within the church, capital C, this is without a denomination, it's the Church of Almighty God, that would have a true burden and love for Israel, your chosen people, and the apple of your eye, citing Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. We repent for the anti-Semitic spirit which has pervaded the church, for the false belief that the church has replaced Israel in God's prophetic and redemptive plan, Forgive us, Father. Give us hearts that love Israel as you do. Give your church revelation from your word that you're shaping history for two groups of covenant people, Israel and the church, whom you're bringing together as one new man. Ephesians 2, verses 11 to 16. We call the church to understand that both her heritage and her destiny lie with the Jewish people. May the Jews and Gentile Christians be built together into a glorious holy temple fit for your dwelling place on earth. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. Praise God. Well, I just invite you to make your own declarations. Teach that to your teams. Based on scripture, she's used Zechariah 2.8. She's used Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 16, and then also 21 to 22. You and I can do that. Powerful to put it in words, powerful to speak it out, power to share it as a prayer with your prayer partners. So praise God. Get a copy, if you wish, of these slides and, and really make up your own. Use these if you wish, but... You can all do this. So praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Oh, yes. Now, here's a little process I forgot to do. Sorry, Susan. Here was a question we have at the bottom of this slide. Who's got a prayer in your heart for many to awaken to this truth? Is this something that's on your heart and you want to pray? Oh, good. Linda, yes, yes. We just bring to you the church. God, we love the church, but the church has gone off to a different place instead of your word. Lord, we have gone after man instead of after God. Lord, forgive us. We need to repent. We have made our own traditions and our own laws instead of following your Torah. Instead of following your word from gener from well, the just the entire Bible. <laughs> I just thank you, God, that you are speaking to people in all the churches around the world. 
those that have their hearts ready to hear your word. I thank you, Lord, you are causing them to stand up and cry out that we need to repent for coming against Israel, that we would fall on our faces and repent for our many traditions that do not belong, that we would realize that the church has never, ever, ever replaced Israel. It was never in God's heart. God knew that there would be time, the time of the Gentiles, and that soon will be finished and all Israel will be saved. Lord, I just cry out, the church will repent for our many atrocities uh, from soon after Jesus went back to sit at the right hand of the Father. Forgive us with for all the different ways we have gone and all the different things we have proclaimed that were never from you and never from your word. I thank you, Lord, that a big, huge blanket of repentance will be over every single country and every church until there is change. You know, God, you know who will heed the warning, but we pray that the church would turn around and be saved, that by falling on their faces, they will have the eyes of their understanding open, like it says in Ephesians, and realize we need to repent for thinking we ever took the place of Israel that we need to repent for thinking anyone else was our parents except those that are in, named in Scripture. Lord, our legacy is what is written in your word, and we've gone off and made our own laws and our own thoughts. Forgive us, God. Help the church to repent. Pick up the word of God. Come back to you and do exactly as we're supposed to do. Forgive us, God, for adding all the man-made junk and help us realize we're supposed to be comforting Israel right now. We're supposed to be praying for Israel right now. All Israel will be saved, and the only reason that we can even stand up is because there are spiritual parents, and they've brought us into all of this. I just thank you, Lord, that we'll realize what your word says all the way through and follow it. Oh, God, we love the church. We just don't love the way it's doing now. So we just cry out that you will cause us to bow down, listen to you, turn around, and come directly toward you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Kim just unleashed a bunch of hearts. If I knew how to do that, I would be doing it too. That was a beautiful prayer, spot on. Oh, yeah. Pastor Jeff, it's easy. You just go to react and you press your heart button. <laughs> oh, we go to react. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I just, oh, good. I get it. Mm -hmm. Here we Here we go. Did that work? Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. God bless Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. I get it. Wow. And I don't mean to uh, minimize. That was a spot on prayer. I'm so it glad was. it's being recorded. It needs to be it needs to be played and preached in uh, a million million churches all over the planet. Yeah. Who did we think we were? How stupid can you get? How stupid. I mean, beyond stupid, how rebellious, yes. how idiotic, how vain, how sick, deeply yeah. sick, rebellious. Yeah. It's God. Amen. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Did you want to add to that, uh, Kim? Any any prayer or do I move on? I, I, Linda said it all. God bless her. <laughs> It was just perfect. Yeah. It was per everything I would have said and more. She said, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Shake baloto, balete. Well, here, I love this. We use this every week because this is so connected to this connection from the old to the new. Isaiah 61 connects to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. They go together. It's really powerful. 
In fact, next week you'll have a slide where the both of them come together. And so I'm just going to read this. This is the complete Jewish Bible translation of Isaiah 61. It says, the spirit of Adonai Elohim is upon me. This is what Jesus preached in the synagogue in Nazareth. His synagogue, he went to the synagogue. It was his turn to get up and preach. He pulls out this scroll, Isaiah 61, <laughs> says it's now manifest. But I leave it to you to read Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and, and um, the next several verses after that. 16 it is. Yeah, he came to Nazareth, and then he was preaching. So the spirit of Adonai Elohim is upon me because Adonai has anointed me to announce good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to let out into light those bound in the dark. I love that phrase. To proclaim the year of favor of Adonai, the day of vengeance of our God. That was the one fragment he did not say. I guess that is to be said at one point. To comfort all who mourn, yes, to provide for those in Zion who mourn, giving them garlands instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a cloak of praise instead of a heavy spirit, so that they'll be called oaks of righteousness, planted by Adonai in which he takes pride. They'll rebuild the ancient ruins, restore sites long destroyed, They'll renew the ruined cities destroyed many generations ago. Strangers will stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners plow your land and tend your vines. But you will be called Kohanim of Adonai, spoken of as ministers to our God. Wow, that's, yes, we're called ambassadors, royal amb ambassadors now. And you will feed on the wealth of nations and revel in their riches because of your shame, which was doubled, and because they cried they deserved disgrace. Therefore, in their land, what they own will be doubled. Joy forever will be theirs. For I, Adonai, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. So I'll be faithful to reward them, to make an eternal covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations, their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are the seed Adonai has blessed. I'm so joyful in Adonai. My soul rejoices in my God. Can you picture Jesus saying this? This is so awesome. I'm, my soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in salvation. Wow. Dress me with a robe of triumph, like a bridegroom wearing a festive turban, like a bride adorned with her jewels. For just as the earth brings forth its plants, or a garden makes its plants spring up, so Adonai God will cause victory and glory to spring up before all nations. Wow. That's what he said. That's what he said. Wow, I just love that. I love reading it. I read it several times each week. We read it yesterday. We read it again today. Read it to your teams. To me, this is such a, well, this in Isaiah 53, but this is such a statement of who Yeshua was. And it's picked up in Luke. It's just beautiful. Just read the two together to your prayer teams and they will get it. So praise God. Any comment um, before we move on? Well, let's, yes, Jason just saying, we pray against witchcraft. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the witches hate this stuff. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. He says, I pray against witchcraft. I see what might be a spider towards the center of a web. Maybe God is trying to show me that the body is caught in a web of lies. Yes, sir. Regarding replacement theology, clearly, yes, they are. 
I know many teach based on the spiritual Jew and circumcision of their heart, where there's neither male nor female Jew nor Gentile, etc. I get their heart, but at the same time, I also believe two things can be true at the same time. God speaks in layers. I think it's a middle ground that God wants to bring down so we can truly be one. I'm still double-minded on the issue in some regards, as I can see two different sides, but I tend to believe there's a common unity. Yes, 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 in Yeshua, Jesus. Yes, that is the truth, my friend. That's the way I'm going. That's the way Linda Linda has been teaching me. Susan's been teaching me. We're going in one unity, Yeshua, Jesus, Jew and Gentile. It's pretty exciting. Very exciting. And that's the way it was supposed to be <laughs> the minute he ascended. It was supposed to just continue. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. So here we have this classic prayer that um, Linda referred to, Romans chapter 11, verses 23 to 27. I think, first of all, let's play this beautiful worship song, Never Again, by Baruch Harris. By the way, I just got a CD from him. This is only one of about a dozen incredibly wonderful worship songs. He is so anointed. And um, I got to post those on the website or something. But he is a Messianic Jewish believer in Jerusalem wonderful man of God. So let's listen to Never Again, and then we will read Romans 11, 23 to 27. It goes right together. Never again will your people stand alone. Never again will they be left without a home Never again will they think they have been abandoned For all will know this is the place God has his hand on Never again will we dare avert our eye From the lambs led away silently to die Never again let our country bar the doors To the tattered ships that flee from deadly shores Never again, never again Hear, O Israel, never again Never again will you hang your head in shame For your God has brought you back to praise Him Never again allow the world to turn its head And pretend innocent blood has not been shed For our God has joined us spirit, flesh and bone We shall be to you a wall of living stone Never again, never again Hear, O Israel Never again, never again will you hang your head in shame For your God has brought you back to praise His name Never again, never again Now a kingdom has awakened to your pain Though around you gather all the hordes of hell They'll face the power of God's love for Israel Never again, never again Will I close these eyes to sleep Till I remind my God of the eternal promise 
just read this chat i love that phrase by the way the the hordes of hell are going to face the power of god's love for israel it's just such a perfect way of putting it and jason has just posted i gained so much of my journey to the hebrew roots over the years it's so much deeper than we may know so much is closed off to many because it's not taught just as the inside of uh, Linda rightly pointed out Yahweh's feasts and Moed appointed times. Amen. Amen. We have to bring this back. We are the little people bringing it back. The so-called leaders of the church are asleep or apostate. Um, so it's up to little people like you and me. L regular people. What? What? You know what I'm saying. You have a you have the knowledge, you have an insight, you just share it with your 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 teams, your network, whatever. Praise God. Praise God. So who wants to read this wonderful? Maybe Jason, is this you? Or you want to read Romans 11, 23 to 27, brother? It's so powerful. Every time I have it up here, I just love it. Go ahead. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, who are natural branches, be grafted into their own tree? For I do not desire, brother, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant <laughs> with them, but I take away their sin. God's so amazing. As, as I'm reading that immediately, I go into uh, John, I think it's 15, where it says, I am the branches or I, I'm the vine and you're the branches and you can't do anything apart from me. Oh my gosh. We're, we're, how good to be grafted into his DNA. And yeah. That, uh, I want the, the life force, the sap, the, the heart, the, the spirit of God, all of that to, to flow freely again, the ancient gates to be opened, the floodgates, if you will, and uh, just to, just to be uh, flowing through his people, his, his, his appointed people, his, you know, he chose Israel. They were the little of all, littlest of all nations. You know, he loves the underdog. It is so good. And, and, yeah. And they have, a, they have a calling. They have a calling. And I, even though I may not fully understand it all, I do believe it. I do believe it. And I'm grateful to be grafted in. And yeah. Yeah. And, and he talks about later, you know, the way the Lord's going to use the Messianic community, the Messianic Jews and the nations and stuff, whether that's during the millennial reign, etc. But it's going to be good. It's going to be good. God's good. God's good. It's always good when we get when we get more of Jesus in us, more light, more love, and to be where we belong. Even as even as Gentile believers, 
he designed us. He, he before we were born, he had a plan for our lives to so you know for us to come back into that perfect alignment, that beautiful state of purity and wholeness to really bring us there. We, we as Gentiles, we can the same thing of being grafted in, right? Being born again Amen. or whatever. So, anyways, praise God. Praise God. Well, and I also want to read into this what uh, beautiful chat that. Linda just posted. Wow. She says, God is causing us to, quote, go and tell, unquote, in the churches. It's hard to go to the churches and speak. They're surprised and angry both. Some are ready to hear and repent, but many are still fighting these truths. We're praying he takes over and causes his words to be heard and repentance to be to fall, it has to be all him flowing through each church. Exactly. Yep, 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 yep. Amen and amen, says Jason and Kim and me. This is really good. Amen, amen. Wow. Yes. And I'm doing my love show here. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at the next slide. We're getting down to towards the end here. Now, this may be one of the last exercises we have today. It's preparing your heart. Wow. I mean, this is sort of the big picture for the King of Glory to come in. This is out of Psalm 24, verse 9. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Yes, it's also basically tied to Revelation 3, 19 and 20. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. And I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him, will sup with him and he with me. So again, I'll honor your privacy, three minutes with the Lord. And is there any even residue of a residue of a residue there? There's some unwillingness to respond to his call of repentance. So I'll honor your privacy about this and check back in in three minutes. God bless you.
Well, praise God. Praise God. Again, this is for you and your prayer teams. Give them privacy. And here, I'll honor your privacy, but does anyone want to talk or share if you've seen any resistance, unwillingness to respond to his gift, his call of repentance? Going ahead. Yeah. Um, for those of you who have been with me, or I've been with you guys for a couple of years now, and uh, one of my biggest struggles has, has really been intimacy. And I know in my head, you know, that it's all about intimacy. Everything flows out of intimacy, uh, wisdom, safety, everything. And the Lord has continually called me graciously to intimacy, even the, even the knock. Um, and I, as I'm praying about it, it's like, I feel like there's been distractions for sure. Uh, there's been other cravings or lusts, if you will. Um, uh, just other things, you know, uh, pulling me away, uh, drawing away my attention, my time, the investment of time. And as in this season, I've been really trying to uh, go to the roots of things, um, deal with things, being open and transparent, vulnerable, uh, making the right choices, allowing things to let go. But there's still a, an inner resistance um, to that quiet time where I'm just being still before the Lord. Um, and there's so much he wants to reveal, I believe, um, but yet there's a, there's, there's a block. Um, but I feel like the Lord, even having said that, I feel like the Lord is honoring the work that I've been doing um, in obedience to really come outside of my comfort zones, to pursue him, to remove barriers, um, the things that, you know, in the natural that think or, or thinking, well, that's, that's 101. You should be intimate with God. But, uh, uh, you know, from, a, I was sadly, uh, more agreeable to learn about God, to fill my head with truth, at least as far as head knowledge, Bible knowledge, uh, learning new things. Um, but, you know, just like, one of the one of the fear. I just I don't want to go sideways, but one of the fears has been they're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge thereof, denying the power. And so I, I'm learning to walk more in the spirit over the last couple of years than, than ever before. But the repentance, as far as that intimacy time, I feel like what the Lord is showing me as I'm choosing to do what is right. I'm choosing to do these hard things. And I know it might sound ridiculous for a lover of Christ. Uh, somebody way more mature than I am to, to be like, well, how can you struggle with just being still before God? You know, um, whatever fears and not wanting to be like the children of Israel that were like, hey, you know, Moses, you go talk to God. We, we don't want to get too close. Right. Um, but I feel like what the Lord is showing me, I'm seeing an arm with its sleeves rolled up and, and penetrating, just like if you put your arm through water. You can feel the water. It's different. I feel like there's a part of me by the choices I'm making that I am moving in repentance, not, not to the degree that the Lord wants me to, but he's, I believe he's pleased with the direction I'm going in. And I feel like I'm moving through a barrier to intimacy and I'm moving more into that because my heart of hearts, I want to be there. I don't want to be trapped in this realm and man's understanding in the limited dimensions when we have everything through Christ. He's the door, the gate. I want to go through. I want to be where he is to know what he wants me to know, to see from his expect from his heart, his blueprint, and be able to live that out. I don't want to give, well, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I want to know the will of the Father. I, I want to, I want to have walk in wisdom and obedience. But, but it all comes through intimacy. So I'm trying to repent more. And God knows that so that I can spend the time that he needs. I can shut off distractions. I can wait before him to where he's developing more of my uh, spiritual eyes and ears, etc. cetera. Um, so I connect with him more at a heart level to be what only he can make me. Because I'm not transformed by head knowledge. I'm not transformed by good deeds. You know, I'm transformed by being in his presence. And I know technically 
we all live and move and in him we have our being, but that's in him. And, and I, just, I just feel like there's a dimension, a realm of intimacy that he's wanting to invite me and, and the body into. And many may already be there or a certain few may already be there. But, but I feel like I've settled for mediocrity for so much of my life. And I'm, I'm trying to move through that. I don't want to settle for, well, this is just the way it is. There's a limit. There's a wall. Jesus, you tore the veil. You rent your own body that we can enter in and that we would be righteous and bold as lions, sons, you know, daughters of the king, ambassadors coming into his throne, into his, into his uh, place, you know, to approach him, Father, yeah. and me. Anyways, so. Uh, oh, thanks for being so open and vulnerable. Who's got a prayer for Jason going ahead? Hula Vashoto. I think Linda does. Jason, if it's any help, um, I, I really can absolutely understand. I've been there. So what <laughs> I found is that when you humble yourself because you know you sinned, God put it there, and you humble yourself because you go, gosh, Lord, I, I really want to be with you. That humbleness already causes that repentance to just come out. You don't need 20 minutes, even 30 seconds. And it will cause it to come out. And when it does, you go from the lowliest spot to know you're forgiven. And all of a sudden, the praise just oozes out of you. And you have so much fun praising God that you forget all the other junk that happened. So <laughs> I just pray over you right now. Because you you are lovely. I miss hearing you. I thank you, Lord, for Jason. I thank you, Lord, for his life. I thank you, Lord. I don't think he realizes he's seeking you so, so much. I thank you, Lord. Your word says when we seek you, we're found by you. So there he is. He's found by you. And I thank you, Lord, that when he has something to repent of, you'll just keep knocking on that door till he says, okay and repents and i thank you lord then you take him to that highest spot of praise which will cause him to dance all over the house i just thank you lord i thank you he has a perfect heart in you because he's after you and that's what it's all about going after you lord you said in john 17 3 eternal life is knowing you and all jason ever says is he wants to know you so he in that he's just in that perfect spot Praise you, praise you, Lord, for his life. Thank you. He'll just enjoy you. He'll enjoy this trip of life. And he'll enjoy, even enjoy repenting, knowing it's changing him all over. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. How perfect. Perfect. And yes, thank you, Susan. Look at she put up this slide. This is really Linda's slide. She taught me so much. Look at this, Jason. Here you are. The more you praise him, the more you want to repent. And the more you repent, the more you want to praise him. So this, this beautiful spiritual heart process, you don't have to intellectualize. You just receive the love of God. The closer you get, the more you praise him, the more you, of course, want to remove anything that's in the way. So thank you, Linda. Beautiful prayer. Thank you, Jason, for your openness. And there you are. For all I know, that's that's a picture of you just receiving the love of God right there. It doesn't have to be intellectual. It's just, um, wow. There we are. Praise God. <laughs> Good timing. Perfect timing with the slide. I love this slide. Yeah, Psalm 72, verse 15 says, prayer also will be made for him continually. Daily he shall be praised. Yeah, that was the game plan. We just even, you're having a hard day, really a tough day. And we all have had those many, and we're going to have more. You keep praising him. He's got an eternal plan, and you're part of it as his bride. It's so exciting. 
it's wild the, to be alive at this time, but here we are. Praise God. Well, let's look at the next slide. Now, here is the last process of the day. This one is a great one for your team because I think a lot of people are afraid of offending people. There's a fear of God instead. I'm sorry, a fear of man instead of a reverential fear of God. And we have to keep working up to that place where instead of man, we have this healthy fear of God. Like Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Again, in Proverbs 15, 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And then Psalm 118, 6, 8 and 9, it says, the Lord is on my side, I'll not fear. What can man do to me? Better to depend on the Lord than to trust mortals. Better to depend on the Lord than to trust influential people. And then finally, Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of the man brings a sneer. But whosoever puts his trust in the Holy Spirit, the Lord shall be safe. That's 29, 25. So spend time with the Lord these three minutes and at the same time to preserve our time today. Let's, we can also hear this wonderful song by Baruch, Turn Around, which is the classic song on repentance. That's what Shuvah means. So see if you have even a residue of this fear of a man as opposed to the reverential fear of God. It'll be private, but if later you want to share, that's fine. And uh, once the song by Barack is over, we'll, we'll check out if you did want to share. God bless you. your father, he's your brother, he's your comforter and friend, he's your God and he's your lover, he will be there till the end, if you follow him he'll lead you to a place you've never been, he made heaven just for you, and he wants you to come in, turn around.
All we have to do is say that we're sorry that we wanted just to do things our own way. But when your way has left us bankrupt, devil says it's time to pay. There's another way called Calvary. We can fall on his mercy. Turn around, turn around. He is knocking at the door. Turn around, turn around. You've been in this place before. Stop and listen to the message. From the messenger he sent You said if there is a God Won't someone tell me where he went He is waiting right behind you If you just open the door He once loved you to death And he wants to love you more Well, that's the classic song for repentance, turning around. Now, again, it's private, but does anyone want to share that you got rid of some fear of man or that has been an issue? I'm, I'm sure when you share this with your prayer teams, people will have issues about that. And it's fine if they never share them with you, but that they looked at it with the Holy Spirit is the main thing here. Praise God. Praise God. I I just so love this song and the sound of the clock ticking at the end. The sound of the clock. I don't each for this this week, it just stands out more and more with the message behind this song. Uh praise the Lord that um I, I praise that pray this message is heard by so many people on the globe. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kim. Agreed. Woo! The clock is ticking. Yeah. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Here again, you just share this with your teams. This is a person we don't know what he released, but that's the deep joy and freedom, liberation when you've removed the 100 pound sack of cement so to speak from your back you don't need to carry whatever that was the lord has now blessed you you've removed it he's cleansed fully that issue yeah jason saying as the old man dies yeah it's about so does the fear of man. Yeah. Amen. Exactly. Well put. As the old man dies, does the fear of man die? Yeah. So here we just see maybe that was the issue this guy got rid of. And there's deep joy. So repentance brings deep joy. And you don't even have to know what it is. You don't have to know exactly what another person removed. Praise God. It's just enough that you're in that direction and you just want to, you really want to love and be that much more connected to that person. You're part of the bride. You're part of the family. There's zero connect, you know, it has nothing to do with where you're located on the planet, what color you are, what nationality. That's all irrelevant. You're part of the bride. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, Jason said, none of my business. Exactly. It's the Holy Spirit's business. <laughs> and he knows, he knows it already. Nothing that you're hiding from him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> this is great. Let's see what Susan just said. 
Yeah, and Susan says, amen. As we discover him, the more we realize man's opinion just doesn't matter anymore. Bingo. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Whereas that was how I was brought up. I was really brought up focusing on the world and career. What's your career going to be? How are you doing in school? Going up this ladder. Quote, what kind of a ladder was it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't want to keep you here another hour, but you would be laughing by the end of the hour. Yeah, um, that's actually pretty profound. What kind of ladder was it? Was it Jacob's ladder? Or <laughs> exactly. Yes. 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 God bless yes, you. yes. yes. It was not. It was not. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Amen. You're welcome. So you were wrestling <laughs> with with Jesus all all along. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Praise uh, God. By the way, you know, any one of you now on this call. Uh, I say at any one point, jump on in when it's a week or more when I can't do this. You can read these scriptures. You can pick your own. Uh, Sue can, Susan can do these. You can mm -hmm. do them. I can do them. We're, we're just, in the Lord's eyes, we're all his children. He's the master. Amen. We're the children, regardless of your chronological age or where you're at on the path. It, yeah. You know, we're yeah. all, God is no respecter of persons. So we're all equal members of the bride. Amen. And we're in that sense, we're just teaching others. So mm -hmm. uh, really feel free to, to uh, jump on in at any one point. Amen. Well, Amen. Let's, yeah. Let's look at the, uh, maybe I should read this also. This, this guy having, having released what he released is really adding to his testimony. Revelation 12, 11, it says they, that would be you and me, they overcame him, that would be Satan, by the blood of the lamb, that's number one, and by the word of their testimony. So as you release old strongholds, your testimony grows and the enemy cannot take that away from you. You share that with others. You show the fruit of re repentance. Yes. And therefore, you have the strength not to live your life in the face of, of death. There's no fear of immediate death, even as you're persecuted. Amen. Because you have this beautiful connection with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's go to the next slide. Yes, here, we've done this a number of times. I'm just not going to read all of it, but even if you see the the image here, we can all make our declarations. Mm -hmm. And um, you use scripture if you, you know, mm -hmm. one after another as the Lord leads. And Amen. Just, I'd like to read this last one. The de decree is power from heaven is flowing to us and through us. That's what happened on this call today, Holy Spirit. And as agents of authority, yes, the Lord's given us his authority. We're his agent. We partner with the Lord. The world is changed. Yes, yes, yes. One by one as we minister to people. Mm-hmm. They're coming into the kingdom. So praise God, the world has changed. So I just invite you, use this one if you want, but make up your own. This is from a dear friend, Stefania, who was on our call yesterday, by the way. Yes. yes. And, um, yeah, that was great to have her on the call. So yeah. we all can make this uh, our own or uh, you make your own up. It's really fun. Amen. So praise God. Let's look at the next slide. And here you are, a spear on fire. Mm -hmm. This spoken over me initially, but it certainly applies to you and more than just us on the call right now. Anyone who's been touched by the truth that repentance is a gift. You thus are seen by the Lord as a, quote, spear on fire, a spear of truth. 
wherever you landed, this would be your own social network, your friends, your family, whatever, wherever you landed, the fire of repentance will touch hearts and nations. We're seeing this happening in Africa. By the way, tomorrow is Africa Kneels. I always love that call because the praise reports coming in are amazing, mm -hmm. especially from Malawi. We're getting each week from our sister in Malawi a list of people over 100 that weekend that her young team has gone out into the street, the market, the bars, wherever they've gone, the villages. There, People are jumping in the boat into mm -hmm. the kingdom through repentance and the, the boldness of these young people to preach. It's really exciting. So you are a, quote, spear thrown by God. It's all God's gift. We just have to keep putting it out there. It certainly, it's like his blood is the gift. This and communion is a gift. Susan does communion tomorrow, by the way, really beautiful. Mm. And that's moving people too. So these mm. are all gifts of God and we just throw them out there. Praise God. Amen. Let's look at the next slide. Yes. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Yes, this is coming up. I got to do homework on this today. This is a holy month, a holy month of repentance. And we are going to have a national day of repentance, a global day of repentance in effect, because people from all over the planet will be invited to be on a Zoom call on October 7th, commemorating the horrific violence that was done, murder that was done to Israel on that day, the one-year anniversary, the worst violence against Jews since the Holocaust. And preceding that, we're going to have seven days, almost like seven days of walking around to take down the walls of Jericho, seven days of prayer, fasting, and repentance. What we do, unlike other ministries to date, we're, we focus on repentance. So I hope um, you'll look at our website. It'll be on globalrepent.com, but we should have prayer points and points of repentance that you will have uh, for those seven days leading up to October 7th. And Susan's already done a lot of beautiful work. It's on globalrepent.com. So please check it out, pass it along to your friends and uh, register. It's free to jump, jump in. And you'll get the Zoom call information, but also get, obviously, the prayer points and all looking at the website. Praise God. Amen. And it's really about sharing our love of Israel to people who are stressed beyond the word stress, to be in bomb shelters, to be... Um, story I heard today was one of the uh, dear friends of us in this ministry was they felt uh, a drone had been sent over their car and that they were about to be bombed at any one point and then it went away. They were able to evade it. But I mean, there's real risk of death that they're suffering each day. So mm -hmm. we want to send our love, want to send our love and we want to repent for replacement theology or any other way that we did not honor their scriptures and the feasts. So praise God. Let's look at the next slide. And that's who we are. You've mm -hmm. seen that slide before. Keep us in your prayers. We depend on donations. No other church supports us. No denomination supports us. No foundation supports us. No wealthy individual supports us. But we get donations from time to time from people. And um, you can donate on repentday.com or globalrepent.com. And or if you're in the United States, we're located. National Day of Repentance is at box 246. 
Middletown, California. So praise God. And fruit will abound to your account. That's Philippians 4, 17. Whatever the amount, one lady each month sends in $5. God bless her. She gets as much value out of the young people coming in the kingdom from Zambia as a lady who the other day gave several times more than that for Zambia. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the amount. It's about getting the fruit, getting the fruit that abounds to your account. Mm -hmm. Well, praise God. And lastly, share your testimonies. That's how Susan and I put together these articles that then touch people's minds and hearts, give them opportunity to give. So share your testimony at Pastor Jeff at repentday.com or Susan is at hammersusan1 at gmail.com. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's look at the next slide. Now, two of you that are still on have been so quiet, Catherine and Jimmy, from, uh, I think Jimmy, I know Jimmy is, travels often, but typically is in Uganda. Jimmy, are you here, and can you listen to us? Or Catherine, I think you're either in Mal Malawi or in Kenya. I don't know, I'm forgetting. But if you also have a closing prayer in your heart. We would love to hear from you. We love it when we have our brothers and sisters from other nations. It just shows us, uh, oh, there he is. There we go. There's Jimmy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, brother. Please. What's going on? Tell us, tell us how we can uh, pray for you. What's going on? We would love to just even get a quick praise report from you. Yes, praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank God for his work in my life. Uh, sorry, I have been, uh, I move a little bit late nowadays. So even earlier on when I put on, I was driving while listening. Um, I bless the Lord for this ministry. Of recent, I was assigned... Um, some additional responsibilities. I caretake um, the, the I caretake the unit for disaster and emergency response in the country. So it has increased on my um, responsibilities, and it's a lot of work. But I bless the Lord for the opportunity to be in charge. So that is the reason why you could not see me sometimes, but I bless God for it because he has better plans for us. It's a testimony. Yes. Mm, it's a testimony. I remember we have been praying here and the testimony of God's good work to our lives. So that's what I can say for now. Otherwise, the Lord has been good. Ministry is moving on well. And God is uh, changing about the situation that was there earlier on. And we bless God for that. So um, is it fine if I say the closing prayer or somebody else has something yes. to say? Go ahead, brother. Yes, it would be perfect for you to do the closing prayer. Okay. Uh, Father in heaven, <clears throat> I thank you for uh, today's uh, fellowship and prayer. And uh, our concentration has been on Israel. Yes, Lord, we know Israel is going through a lot, and there's a reason for it. And uh, Father Lord, I would like to join my uh, colleagues, brothers and sisters in praying for Israel as we close. And Father, we ask you to protect Israel, ask you to protect the Jews. We ask you, Lord, to also uh, open their eyes that they may see you, that they may know you, open their hearts, change them, Lord. Because, Father, in 2013, when you gave me a chance to go to Israel, I was shocked to know that actually they, they are, there is little to do with the salvation there or being born again. There was more of the Judaism and uh, following the Sabbath, the, the, the Sabbath prayers, Lord. Father in heaven, um, we know, according to your word in the book of Romans, of how your plan is there to 
to save them. Therefore, at this time, Lord, I pray that you open their eyes. We pray that you save them. We pray that, Father, you protect them from the enemies. The enemies are so many from each and every corner. Father, they have put up very good emergency response systems, ambulance and services, knowing the kind of situation that they have. But Father, Lord, they need more of you and they need to turn back to you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for them to be saved. I pray for their protection. I pray for the healing of the nation. Men are hurting, men are in pain, men are in confusion, men are scattered. Father, put them together, Lord. Meanwhile, Lord, even as we pray for Israel, the rest of the world still needs to know Jesus. There are many who are still lost in religion, many still lost in unbelief, many still rejecting the truth. But Father, I pray that, Lord, you make your way into the hearts of men through the word, the true teachings, and guidance and counseling of the people, instruction of the people. And Father, I pray that, Lord, you save the nations. For Japan, it showed that there is need for evangelism, and we pray for evangelism. In China, there is a lot of uh, worship of gods, and the gods of Pasha, the, 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 what is the dragon. Father, we pray for their salvation. Um, Africa, witchcraft, sorcery. And also now we have a situation where we look like we are so Christian, like we know God, and yet the truth is not in us. Nor are we even believing in the truth, not even believing in the true God. Some people are divided. They are, they are serving God or believing in God, but they also have shrines or they believe in witchcraft. Father, it is terrible, the situation of the church. But Father, we pray that you save the nations, save the people, Heal, guide, and lead. Father, bless uh, Pastor Jeff, Susan, and all of us here. Watch all of us, protect us, provide for us, guide mm -hmm. us, lead us, give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Prosper everything that you put in our hands, the ministries and the businesses and the work that you've given into, unto us, oh my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Beautiful prayer, Amen. brother. Beautiful. And by the way, I think there's a connection at some other call that Japan, because I think Kim has been to Japan and you also, um, Jimmy, is that right? You, you've been to Japan. So that's another connection that two of you have for Amen. another time. Another time. Praise God. Amen. 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 Holy Spirit Amen. works putting the, a team within a team within a team. Yes, isn't it uh, awesome? Praise God. Well, shalom, each one of you. Shalom. God bless you. And we're Amen. excited for Africa tomorrow, Susan. Amen. Amen. We're ready for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jason. You've been so much of a contributor today. God bless you. God bless you, Catherine. And Kim, and so here we go. We'll see you all next time. I love each of you. Thank you again. Bye love for you now. Lord. God bless everyone on this call. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Amen. 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 Any blessings and shalom, everybody. Shalom, shalom. 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 shalom.